right, thank you so much for sticking with Daybreak. My name is Nzi Kibiku. You're just in time for a discussion, a conversation we'll be having with Honorable Gladys Boss, woman for Wasingishu. She joins us now via way of Skype. Honorable Boss, thank you so much for creating time this morning to speak to us here on Citizen TV. Perhaps I'll begin with just a general question. Um, are you satisfied so far with how Kenya has handled the pandemic since we broke, um, since actually the first case was mentioned back in March? Just generally, how have we as a country handled it? I think the country has handled it extremely well, considering the number of confirmed cases we have, the number of deaths. That's a very good performance so far. I am very happy that the government took swift action by ensuring that there was a lockdown immediately, mm -hmm. because what we learned from other countries is they delayed in having a lockdown. And I think Kenya did that very well. Yes. So as much as it's painful for the economy, uh, it's painful for everyone to be out of work, but it's the only way to save lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Um, th that's that's actually on a positive note. Now, let me even come a bit closer home. Yesterday, we th yesterday actually was the first time we saw Parliament um, resuming or rather being able to sit down and discuss, uh, debate rather, a few things before. Um, the first time, or rather, we are seeing this, um, given what we've been happening with coronavirus. The one thing that stood out, perhaps, is the fact that Kenyans noticed members of Parliament are not going to be getting a pay tax or rather a salary cut? Okay, I think uh, that those, are, those are discussions that have to be made by the Parliamentary Service Commission in consultation with the members of Parliament, mm -hmm. and then that can be handled that way. Because you also have to remember that uh, that is a discussion with an employer, because if somebody has a, a mortgage, for example, then how would they service the mortgage? But we're not saying that parliamentarians will not take that, will not make that decision, but it was left to members to complete the discussions on it. But Honorable Boss, when you have two arms of government, when you have the judiciary and the executive, and you have the entire country, Kenyans taking salary cuts, others having to be um, laid off from work, companies having to shut down, what, what, what role has, has Parliament played in putting their, uh, their effort on this? No, I think if you listen to a lot, if you look at what has been happening some of the parliamentarians, there have been challenges of people on the ground where mm -hmm. they are still even helping. Because remember, most parliamentarians are like social workers. They help out in harambees. They help out in funerals. They help out in, um, in gen you know, generally taking care of society. So I think what I would like to be seeing happening, and I think what parliamentarians are going to do, is they are going to step up in being able to protect people. For example, I can talk about what we are making assessment in Wasingishu, we want to see how many people are going to be vulnerable, how many people are not are going to be without food right. because they cannot be able to go and do their usual daily wage but, Kibarua jobs. Right, but Honorable Boss, it's not every day that there's a pandemic in the world, in this country. It's not every day. So for a time like this when we should have been seeing our members of parliament, our political leaders at the forefront, should they also not be taking this pay cut? Is it fair? No, it's, I mean, I think it's a good thing to do. But again, like I said, I think it's unfair to ask me to make judgment on what different individuals make because it's a cooperative decision. If uh, you look at the judiciary, you're probably talking about the Supreme Court, which has nine people. So negotiating with them is very easy. Whereas you're looking at parliament that has 349 members who have not even had an opportunity to all meet or at least for proper consultations to be done. Mm. So I think it's better for Kenyans to be patient and wait for those consultations. What Kenyans should be asking is, is my local MP prepared to help those who will, because the repercussions have not begun now, by the way, yeah? it is going to get worse in another two months because someone will have been out of work for two months. And I'm not concerned about people who have salaries. We are more concerned about those people who actually go to work in, for example, if uh, people are no longer working in the flower farms, then those people in the flower farms cannot go to work and therefore will not be able to earn any money. There are those who are on a daily wage who are normally in the market. Many so, of them are not going to the market as much. So, and Honorable so, Boss, you've, you've asked a very good question. Kenyans right now should be asking what the members of parliament, what their MPs are doing. What yes. should MPs be doing at this point in time? I would love to hear from you as a woman rep. What should members of parliament be doing at such a time? Because they've been awfully quiet for the past one month. Okay, first of all, let me correct that members of parliament haven't been quiet. If, for example, you take the example of my committee, we have reviewed more than eight pieces of regulations mm -hmm. which, and are the ones that are currently being used in the country. 
the public order, the, the public health declaration act, I mean regulations that was passed before my committee. What is allowing the government to take undertake curfew? That had to become come before my committee. If you and if uh, if you look at the prevention and suppression, notifying of diseases, and ensuring that people can be moved out of their houses and taken to compulsory quarantine. That is under these pieces of regulations that have been passed. Right, I but Honorable Boss, Kenyans expected to see the same members of parliament who have energy discussing matters politics. That same energy, why is it not being translated to a pandemic? No, for, first of all, I haven't completed saying this. Majority, in fact, 80% of parliamentary work is done at the committee level. Mm-hmm. So what you should be looking at the list, when you thought parliamentarians were awfully quiet, Several committees were meeting. The health committee were having meetings. The, the budget committee was having meetings. The, 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 the committee on foreign affairs was also trying to find out how many Kenyans are overseas and so on. So meetings were ongoing. The committee on delegated legislation was having meetings. The, the committee on, on justice and legal affairs were having uh, meetings. In fact, if you remember, so what has happened is that Work has been ongoing, but is that people assume it's only when the house is sitting that work is actually ongoing. So just to tell you, you would not have curfew, you would not have the lockdown of restaurants, you would not have the issue that there is, people must be taken to designated hospitals mm-hmm. because there has to be a law to be passed in order for that to happen. Okay. Luckily, the committee on delegated legislation can approve those regulations without necessarily going to the floor of the house. But yesterday, when the VAT regulation needed to be passed, which needed the floor of the house, mm-hmm. then the house had a sitting. And even you see yesterday, parliament was struggling because not everybody can go to parliament. So there had to be a limited number of people and people had to sit in separate places some were sitting in tents outside, and you must have seen that. So I think it's something for the first time, the fact that government, parliament has not prevented the government from passing any legislation, and we have gone out of our way to assist them. For example, on the regulations, I remember saying, let, government can, can implement the regulations while they wait for us to consider them. Right. Well, we don't stop them from undertaking the drastic action that they needed. And so I want to make this clear. The fact that the, the, we are crediting the fact that we have don't have so many numbers in Kenya, thank God, is because there was a lockdown. The lockdown would not have happened without regulations being passed, which we passed. So we were in the front line in ensuring that government was able to do that. Mm-hmm. Not a single, the, all the recommendations that the president did make. Mm-hmm were all approved, and most of them at committee level in the first instance because these are extraordinary circumstances. Mm -hmm. You can't wait and say that you want all the parliamentarians to meet at once, but the standing orders allow, and the laws allow, for the parliament through a committee level to be able to give those approvals pending the full hearing, the full sitting of the House. So, so, so here's what, the thing. Here's the thing, Honorable Boss. The fact, speaking of committees, um, uh, the committee that specifically will be handling um, or is handling COVID-19 was supposed to prepare and submit um, reports to Parliament bi-weekly. Yesterday was the first time we saw Parliament coming together. Were you able to hear anything from this committee? Were they able to report or okay. present anything? I will report on my, my particular committee. My committee passed the Public Health Prevention and Control Suppression Act, mm-hmm. the Public Finance Emergency Response Fund, mm-hmm. it passed the Value Added Tax Amendment Rate of mm-hmm. Tax Order, the Public Order Act, the Public Health Declaration and Notifiable Diseases Act, the Public Health Declaration and Formidable Diseases Order of 2020. Surely, mm-hmm. seven pieces of legislation in record time isn't that something? I think that is something we should credit Parliament for. If you look at the budget committee, for all those budgetary adjustments to be undertaken, it took several sittings. Right. The budget committee. I hear you, and that's your committee. <laughs> but can you confirm to Kenyans that indeed you were not able, in uh, the entire Parliament yesterday was not able to hear anything from the COVID um, committee that was supposed to be preparing and submitting bi weekly reports? The, the, remember the committee that is supposed to be received, has to receive reports for government mm-hmm. in order to table the report in parliament for parliamentarians to discuss it. So again, this is an issue that is reliant 
on getting information because we remember we are the parliament over, undertakes an oversight role over the executive so it would normally on a normal circumstance you would summon uh, the cs help you would summon uh, some of the people who are in the current emergency response team mm -hmm. in order to hear what they have undertaken and interrogate whether there is something more they can do or is there any help they require from parliament and so when that report is may not be ready it doesn't mean that the other doesn't work is not the work is not ongoing because you can also imagine how stretched everyone within the health sector in kenya is because every day they're having meetings of their own let alone even having to make reports yeah, right. to parliament they can be compiled and given the most important thing is to be vigilant have oversight and what we right and right now is to ensure that there is preparatory uh, 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 systems are being put in place mm -hmm. we have a bigger surge than we have at the moment but god willing we want mm -hmm. okay so we, let's talk about one specific bill let, let, let's talk about one specific bill that is in front of the senate and that's by honorable sakaja johnson that's the pandemic response and management bill which is looking at kenyans being exempted from paying rent utility bills in case you are servicing any loans right now are you satisfied with this bill by the senator okay i haven't had time to interrogate the the bill but what i must commend the senator is the fact that at least trying to bring that in mm -hmm. is that it will allow us to be able to interrogate it when we all look at the bill we can say this is impractical this is practical this is possible and that is not possible that is the whole point of having debates or allowing hearings at committee stages for the bill to be looked at but at the moment any attempt to be able to be to because yes the issue of um, rent is going to become a crisis and you remember if one cannot pay rent, then it means the landlord may not be able to service a mortgage. Right, right. And then that landlord, again, will not be able to, uh, to also pay other people that they pay. Maybe they have other employees. So it will have a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason why this is the time to interrogate and look at all the possible challenges that can possibly occur as a result of people being out of work. So, Honorable because Boss, you say the that... Moment, the disease is not a crisis in Kenya, right. but the shutdown mm -hmm. has caused an economic uh, challenge. So and that is be the first challenge that we have. But we rather have an economic challenge uh -huh. than have than have an, a, a, a disease crisis. Okay. The Honorable cannot... Boss, you've mentioned how the fact that um, politicians, members of parliament, haven't been quiet through this time. Committees have been sitting and doing their job. As a woman rep for Wasingishu, what have you done for the women and the girls in Wasingishu during this time? Are they receiving anything for free, such as masks? Yes, yes. I, my office is, uh, is having masks, masks made locally mm -hmm. and at the Rift Valley Textiles so that we can be able to give out more masks because mm -hmm. after a while people won't be able to keep replacing their masks. What is the key problem? What is the key problem that women in washing issue and girls in washing issue are facing during this pandemic? This one month so far, what are you able to hear from the ground? I think the biggest challenge we have is also when you have a, a lot of uh, young people at home, mm -hmm. they can easily get restless and begin to have social gatherings, which can increase the spread of the disease. We also know that the people have talked about it. there's been a little increased incidences of uh, gender-based uh, violence because people are restless. I know the other big challenge that we have, which many women will suffer, is that most women are the ones who are the food producers at home. So they are the ones who either have to go and get a daily wage job to till land for somebody in order to buy food for their family, especially those who live in the shopping centers in the farmlands, because they are the ones who normally go out to work, but they are not going out to work now. Mm -hmm. So that become an immediate uh, crisis. We, shall, we have a lot of young men also who are able to go for daily wage jobs on farms and then be able to earn a living. They will not be earning a living and that uh, the challenge will come there also. We have those people who live in the informal sectors, informal centers, for example, they, you know, what you would call slums. Right. And the energy in those, in those areas is this are people who go out 
either to wash clothes for somebody, to clean someone's house, and that's how they are able to make a daily living. Honorable oh, no, Boss, the reason why I ask about the women, and more specifically women within your county that are under um, that voted for you as their women rep, the reason why I ask this is, Honorable oh, Boss, we've been seeing cases of domestic violence and sexual violence during this pandemic have going up, especially in those slum areas that you're talking about, the um, less income places. 45% of women in Kenya uh, are prone to sexual violence and domestic Domestic violence and of those 45 women these are women between the ages of 15 to 49 yes yeah i know that uh, we even had a case re a few days ago in wasingishi where a, a woman who's disabled was beaten up by a local a chief mm -hmm. but the leaders were able to come in and be able to ensure <clears throat> that the county uh, commissioner took appropriate action to ensure that this does not es that does not happen again but so, also that action was taken against the chief and that the woman was able to get help. So as a lawmaker and as a politician, how do we tackle domestic violence during COVID-19? I think uh, at, the, at, the, at the most important now is that we have a lot of uh, the county commission, the commissioner's office has the, the it's like about educating the local chiefs, ensuring that it doesn't happen. Now, I've, run, I've seen something. When people realize that action was taken against them immediately, mm -hmm. then it, it prevents the next person from doing it. So I think there just has to be a crackdown by a security machinery. We should we should be the voices to ensure that whenever it hap it is happening, we should highlight it and ensure that action is indeed is indeed taken and that it is in stopped and to ensure that be, because we also have the the challenge of because there isn't much movement sometimes the neighbors won't go to help the person or for us to know about it mm -hmm. but because of also um, um, um i think that when people have highlighted that issue we've been able to try and come in and deal with it but it is something like i said these are extraordinary times so many things that will, ha will happen that are different that don't happen on a normal day the issue is to continue conversation about it for the media to continue to highlight it i mean look out in the when the media highlighted the police brutality it has stopped so we've got to continue becoming the voice of the people and speaking up constantly whenever these uh, violent incidences do happen mm -hmm. all right and here's and the thing I, I believe we should brace ourselves i know that um, the governor of wasing issue has they have been taking they had the ward administrators and to trying to map out who are the people who require i mean who might require help who are the vulnerable people my office has a list of the vulnerable people and like i said this is not the instant time that you begin, the rescue mission begins. It's going to pick up in another three or four weeks mm -hmm. because people still, some people still have an income. The crunch time will come. So we must also say whatever resources we have, let us not expend all of it now because then we will have nothing left when crunch time comes. Right. So it's also important to be wise about the way we plan any distribution uh, or any form of assistance so that at that time you will be able to, with precision, predict the kind of assistance people uh, will require. Right. Honorable Boss, before we can talk about the opportunities for Kenya that COVID-19 has presented, let's quickly talk about um, the sort of resources um, in terms of um, resource distribution and mass testing. Do we know if this is going to um, happen in Wasing issue in your county? Are you following that on the ground, especially in terms of distribution, be it food, be it the masks, be it the sanitizers and so forth? Yes, I think uh, the fumigation has been happening. Um, I think uh, uh, this use, usage of masks is ongoing. Mm. I think our biggest challenge is if we can step up on testing. Because I, what has happened is we have not tested the people who are the most vulnerable. I want us to go to the informal settlements and take random tests. So I would like to see a situation. And then I go to the, uh, the trading centers in the villages and do random testing just to ensure that there are no cases there because you don't want that to spring upon us. So in fact, I would say testing someone like me is not a priority because I'm able to know the symptoms. I'm able to get myself to the hospital. But there are those people who will have symptoms Maybe out of lack of knowledge, they won't know it's COVID. Or 
from uh, lack of having resources, they don't even have the transport to go to the nearest the, 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 the dispensary. Or when they go there, they, I mean, or that they don't even realize that that is an option because they don't know that there's a disease called COVID. So what we should be doing is ensuring that we use all our radio stations, mm. our every type of media platform that we have to teach people about the signs of COVID. Because the first testing is you as an individual person right. know that these are the symptoms and therefore that I need help. And then they also need to know where is the nearest a hospital or dispensary that they can go to and i know that uh, the health workers are already prepared so even if you went to a local uh, hospital they would be able to know that they should evacuate you to the nearest place i would like to see a situation where testing can begin at a mass level for example through mtrh because i know a week ago uh, samples could be taken in some of the hospitals in Wasingishu, but they would have to be sent uh, to Nairobi. All right, so if that can be centralized, and that is where the counties are coming in, yes. I'm happy that the, the Senate has focused on the pieces of legislation and the, the systems that need to be put in place to ensure that that can happen at the lowest level. Because the challenge is, is not the, I, like I say, do not, you don't have to worry about someone like me because I can self-isolate. Right. What about those people who live in one room, a 10 by 10 room in Kibra. So, Honorable Boss, Honorable Boss, he, here's the thing. Your county is very well known for being an agri-based county. Um, and agriculture has been one of the sectors in Kenya that has um, taken a beating, really, for the past one year uh, in terms of natural disasters. We saw the floods, we've seen the droughts, and now we've seen the locusts, right? Is it fair that the same members of parliament tomorrow, when life goes back to normal, they'll be singing about BBI? How is a Kenyan farmer supposed to feed his family and also um, finance a referendum and an election all happening in a span of the next two years. Is that truly fair for that Kenyan farmer? No, let me tell you something, Zinzi. Things are going to change from now henceforth. We will have our priorities correct. And that's why you could see the moment that COVID came round to us, the reggae stopped. All that nonsense about BBI stopped because people realize worst thing, there are more important things that we must tackle we have more serious problems. And as you know, Zinzi, I have been on record saying that BBI will not food, put food on Kenyan tables. It's not going to give our children employment. It is not going to improve our economy. It is not going to, to industrialize the country. So I think this has taught us a lesson that if people, if countries like America and countries in Europe are suffering from this, let me tell you, we now know that we better thank God it never comes to Kenya because we can't be able to cope. Right. If it's happening here, we'd be dropping. Okay. So that, I think it has made us, even as politicians, it has made us step back. But that mm. has always been my position, mm. that what all, the, the having the dancing on stages and in BBI rallies is right. not going to change our country. And therefore, right. this has been a lesson for us right. and I don't think anything will be the same. And I can assure you something. Right. Kenyans will not afford a referendum. Honorable boss, Honorable boss, if there's a lesson that Kenyans have learned is that it, it's not our members of parliament who are essential services. It's the doctors and nurses. It's the yes. teachers right now who are still having to teach um, students across the country with the COVID-19. It is Just the police officers. It's the police officers. Here's the thing, Honorable Boss. These are the same people that politicians tomorrow will frustrate when they ask for a pay rise. The nurses, the doctors, the teachers, the police officers. The most crucial services that we have seen throughout this pandemic. No, I think that's why, Zinzi, I said a lot of lessons have been learned now. Now you appreciate that Mama Mboga who sells the vegetable in the market. Because if she doesn't, you'll have nothing to eat. But Honorable Boss, will that translate if tomorrow, will Parliament tomorrow, Parliament is so quick to pass its own um, salary increase, or just right now as an example, a pay cut, um, that has not been the case. As much as this lesson has been learned, tomorrow the same Parliament will fail to pass uh, the increase of salary for our doctors, our nurses, our teachers, and our police officers. Okay, first of all, Zinzi, after this economic this shutdown, the, uh, the economy is so affected that I don't think there'll be any pay increase for anybody. 
But even then, if should there be any, I think we now appreciate. And people do appreciate who are the front line in our country, who are essential services and who we can do away with. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we, we should be quick to judge what should happen in the future. But I don't think anybody's thinking will ever be the same again. I have had the time to be able to do a lot of thinking. And you ask yourself, we, we worry about so many little things. But when something like this comes, we don't even, I mean, you realize that our priorities are completely lost. And that's why I said I, a referendum is no longer a priority in this country. In fact, I think even an election, we are just, we will barely just make it for constitutional reasons. But even then, you cannot have the kind of uh, 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 flamboyance and uh, money being put into elections and we think that the world is coming to an end if we don't All have right, work. Boss. All right, because I hear you. Time will tell. It's only two years to the next election. Time will tell because I'm sure within those two next years we'll see maybe a couple of other strikes. My last question for you. What should, um, what should Kenyans see from women rep? This is a position that you hold. Shouldn't this not be the perfect time that Kenyans should be seeing um, this position called women rep? What does it do? What would you want to see your fellow women doing? Yes, I mean, the docket is, deals with people with disabilities, vulnerable people in society, like people who are aged and, uh, and women and, and youth. So we are hoping, I know that we have been um, lobbying to get some resources that we can use as an emergency fund in each of our counties. And that has been provided. It's not too much though. And there is a, a, the process of disbursement and the people requesting proposals, because you've got to request what activity you actually want to undertake. We are also happy that through, uh, the, I think that there was a suggestion also to use the CDF offices to be able to also ensure that for mapping out, it's mostly for mapping out, because we, I would know who are the vulnerable people in my, in my county and where they live. And then it's just a matter of taking stock of that. And like I said, the actual intervention mm -hmm. No, it's not, it's, it's not the, this is not the time to study it. I, like I said, a pro, the projection we've been told by those who are studying this, an economist, is that in another three weeks. Got it. All right. The intervention there needs to be done. So I'm seeing, and I've seen the discussions from our uh, women uh, MPs um, uh, uh, the WhatsApp group, and that's the discussion. Everyone saying, I think in my county I have this challenge and so on, and the lobbying has been done. So they've been doing a lot of work just to even get the money dispersed during this time and an agreement that we should be allowed to undertake some emergency work can be helped. And we are also continuing to do our own fundraising within ourselves like we were doing before to be able to make interventions. All right. Thank you so much, Honorable Thank Boss, you. for having this conversation with us. That's none other than Honorable Gladys Boss, Woman Rep for and the Delegated Legislation Chair, just giving us her ideas and thoughts around COVID-19 and how the government has handled um, this specific pandemic. Let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I want to introduce you to a Kenyan who is living in New York. New York has so far seen 10,000 people, over 10,000 people lose their lives. This specific one state alone, New York City. You get to hear from a Kenyan living there. Say in a bit. Thank you.